students and teachers sometimes think that whatever helps me learn the fastest is what's going to help me learn the fastest. But when, you're, when it comes to long-term learning, you want to engage in the kind of learning activities that help challenge the student. So quizzing them, asking them to retrieve what they know really helps them remember that information over the long term. Uh, we've also looked at sort of an optimal schedule of quizzes. How many quizzes do I have to give? Does it have to be right after the lesson? Can it be before the lesson? What about a few days later? Um, in general, the more the better. Um, short answer versus multiple choice questions is uh, a topic that teachers are often curious about. We found that both work. Giving students these short quizzes, regardless of the question type, really helps them learn and remember. Does it have to be very simplistic, or can I give my kids really complex application questions? And especially in science, we do find that, yes, if you give a student an application question about um, adaptation in the environment and give them an applied question about a fox during the winter time or something like that, you'll find that students begin to engage themselves through this retrieval practice about thinking about the information, retrieving it, and applying it to new situations. So as another example um, of a research study in sixth grade social studies, this was with about 120 students. So in order to do that, we take one chapter of material, for instance, a chapter on ancient Egypt in sixth grade social studies, and we take that chapter and we break it down into three sort of learning conditions. A third of that chapter, the students get three quizzes on. A third of that chapter, the kids only just reread in class. And a third of that chapter, they don't get any quizzing. The teacher still goes through her normal classroom lectures, but there's no quizzing, there's no rereading of that information. And again, we want to know what happens over the long term. Again, this may not seem as long term to teachers as we would like, but this is at least longer than a lot of the laboratory research that's been done to date. So how do students perform on the end of their chapter exam? If their chapter about ancient Egypt is about 11 days long, they've gotten a quiz on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, how do they do on the following Friday? Is it the case that if they were quizzed three times, students remember better, or does rereading really help, or should they not get quizzes at all? At the end of the chapter here, I've got plotted on the far left how students performed if they didn't receive any quizzes on that information. Then in the middle, how students performed if they reread sort of that same multiple choice item. They just didn't click in or they didn't see any responses. They would have just read Romulus and Remus was rescued by a wolf. Or if they had three quizzes where students were presented with the multiple choice options and they clicked in their answer. So you'll see that in general, students in this sixth grade classroom performed at about an 81% if they weren't quizzed. This is typical to what the teacher usually finds. She gives lectures, the kids get homework, they're performing at about a B level. If the students reread the items over and over, they really don't see much boost in their learning. Now it's only 83% as opposed to 81%. Students really don't, over the long term, learn a whole lot from rereading material over and over. But if you give students three short, quick quizzes, in this case that weren't for a grade, that were just sort of for fun in the classroom, students are now performing at an A level. We see a 10% boost for student learning almost two weeks later. And again, this is an applied classroom with applied materials with snow days and assemblies and everything else going on. Um, so retrieval practice really does help students remember information over the long term. How do I start using this with my CRAs? So one thing is to try your best to provide as many low stake quizzes as possible. If you have clicker technology, great. If you don't, you can create a simple quiz. If you don't have time to do that, have students generate their own questions. Students can generate their own questions and ask a partner. Or students, you can give a, a quiz and have students grade their own quiz. Uh, it doesn't really have to take much effort or time or preparation on your part. Review quizzes in general are better than pre-quizzes. So if, if the idea is to help students retrieve information to help them practice what they know, it's not very helpful to give them a quiz before they sort of know anything. You want to make sure that you're quizzing after they've learned. Um, you can use short answer or multiple choice questions again. Both seem to work really well, uh, whatever works best for your content area. And fact, definition questions or higher order questions seem to work really well as well. Um, we've found that it, it doesn't really matter how many questions, they could be one question, they could be 20 questions, they could be two minutes, they could be 10 minute long quizzes. Pretty much just asking students 
a question and asking them to retrieve that information counts as a question. Mm -hmm.